for the people who are scared of contracts. Um, as somebody who hires other people and has my my own business, as strange as it might be, um, if you get hired and you you deliver value, at least the level of value that you're that they're expecting, or deliver more value than that, there's there's they're not going to like fire you at all. They're going to try to retain you mm. um, because why would you fire someone when it doesn't make economic sense? Like if you're delivering more value, like they, they, they'll always try to retain you. Um, even like when the budget happens, like I didn't, I didn't, I don't know if it's my team or like me, but like I didn't get fired um, from Microsoft. But mm. I, I just want to say like, you know, just it, it'll take a long time for me to like explain how to deliver value. But if you're good, it's very unlikely that you'll be like terminated before your contract like ends, if that makes sense. I've never mm. been fired from a contract. It makes sense, Josh. It makes total sense. In, in, in the line of working full-time or contracting, if you're not delivering value, more than likely you're not going to keep your job, right? And depending on yeah. where you are in the company, which is why I talk about this often on this channel, the tech space, um, depending on where you are in the company, will determine where you're potentially, if you're going to get fired or not, right? You work for Microsoft, you're in HR, you work at Google, you're in HR, of course, when companies are starting to downsize and so forth, they're going to be the first people who get cut because there's no work for you to do if yeah. there's a hiring freeze, right? If you work in yeah. the support center operations for a product that is in sustain mode, right? And they're starting to build automations behind it where um, it's you know eliminating the need for somebody to physically touch that product and talk to an actual customer. Those are going to be the roles that they're going to be eliminating. Right. Uh, I must yeah. say this, though, during the times of the great resignation and so forth in the great firing as well, too, contractors were let go. But these were contractors that were not on the tech side. Right. The, the contractors that was let go were the HR contractors, recruiting contractors and all of those yeah. folks who um, no longer are adding value to a company. You, on the other hand, being on the technology side in a field that you know is critical to the overall business of course they're not going to eliminate you you being in the cybersecurity field right or development field working on a product that is a long-term growth strategy for your company that you're working for i like to say this josh if you want to have some sort of stability in your career when times are rough the first place that i want people to go to and consider is tech sales right because you're directly tied with the revenue right and if you are good at your job they're not going to eliminate you the other side of it <laughs> is a critical element of the product that you support right or the product or service that your company supports and needs which is cy mm -hmm. cyber security because every single day something is being hacked you know data is being leaked so they need that protection and they're not going to eliminate the people who are adding value in those positions. What's your take on that, Josh? Yeah, that uh, that totally makes sense. Um, I, I do want to say like it's, it is possible for you to get black swan, right? <laughs> if yeah. you're like, um, you know, if you're that means like a, you know, unexpected crazy thing happens. Yeah. Um, so like you, you can be like, you know, in a really good position and then maybe like Elon Musk you know, acquires your company and like, <laughs> like does something to it. That's possible to happen, even yeah. if you're like really good. But yeah, for for the most part, like you know, as long as you, um, if if you're like, you know, someone who's like really making a lot of money for the company, or you know, in cybersecurity, someone who's like really preventing the loss in a critical way for the company, like it's kind of un unlikely for you to get let go. But you know. It, the black swan that word exists for a reason <laughs> it does it does you're absolutely right you're absolutely right so let's let's get back into the focus on the cybersecurity part josh right like you have just released a fantastic cybersecurity operations course uh for the company level and it is a absolute wonder tell people what and why they should consider or tell people why they should consider a career in cybersecurity from your perspective, given the what, why, and how they can actually go about doing it, Josh. Um, yeah, so the what part, like what is cybersecurity? Um, basically, like Antoine was talking about, usually when you're working in tech, um, you're either like, you know, in tech sales or something, and you're making the business money, 
or you're in some kind of support pos position where you're you know enabling the business to continue to make money or you're in cybersecurity where you're primarily like preventing the business from losing money essentially um, so it's really important, you know, because of our, we, this buzzword, like the threat landscape, like, you know, the, um, all the attacks and stuff like going on, it's really easy for companies to get like jacked and lose like a lot of money. So there's pretty, there's always going to be like some kind of need for cybersecurity or like some kind of cyber defense function for, for organizations if they don't want to lose a bunch of money and if they want to stay in compliance, uh, depending on what they're doing. Um, so. Uh, and also, like, according to, like, Bureau of Labor Statistics, like, the cyber field is like, growing, like, quite a bit. And then mm -hmm. there's a, a lot of new jobs growing or a lot of new jobs, like, coming, I guess, being created. Um, so if you, like, you know, think technology is interesting and you want to have kind of, like, a, a stable skill set, I guess I could say, it might be kind of good to consider, like, you know, a career in cybersecurity. And there's, like, a lot of different domains. So you just kind of have to figure out, um, I guess, what you like the best. But usually when people, like, think of cybersecurity, they think, they think of, like, security operations, like, you know, defense, like, defending the network. But there's, like, you know, auditing and, like, identity and access management and governance and, like, all these other things. But... Um, yeah, they kind of the whole goal of those is to kind of prevent entities from losing money. Or if you work in defense, it's you know to safe you know safeguard, I guess the country. I suppose. Yep. 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 Yeah. And, and and tell them this, Josh. Right. So that was fantastic. Talk about you know um, why they should do it. And, and when I mean why, you already hit why, right? Because mm -hmm. it is a job or a career that you're pretty much protected you will um you know have a long career progression and so forth but talk about the money aspect of it as well too right because that's something that i like to talk about on this channel and you said something earlier as a contractor you asked for 180 and you got the 180 that's a that's some good salary right but <laughs> talk about what people can do in the cybersecurity field from a monetization or a money standpoint salary standpoint and so forth yeah generally pays like pretty well um more than i guess well i guess generally speaking it usually pays more than vanilla it like whatever whatever that means mm. um but yeah usually it pays like pretty decently um the first job i had in 2000 was it 2017 um in hawaii too hawaii is like really bad for salary and like it pay it's like quite bad um but that job i got 97k and then uh, the next job I got at like the King County, it was like 115K. And then the next one was 130K. And then the one at um, Microsoft was uh, 180K. But you can make like, you know, quite a bit more than this if, you, if you're working at like an actual, maybe like a actual company that does cybersecurity or like one of the big tech companies, you know, you can make more than that. I was just like a contractor, right? Um, and you can kind of, this is kind of getting into like the entrepreneurial space, but it's, I don't want to say easy, but it's, um, it's somewhat easy to make content around cybersecurity because so many people have been interested in it in like the last couple of years and it's kind of growing is my general sentiment. I don't have like hard numbers for that right now, but, yeah. um, cybersecurity content, it tends to like do well if it's, if it's well produced and like, you know, what created pretty high quality. Um, so there's that too. There's like, you know, it's relatively easy to monitor. I don't want to say easy, but, you know, relative to other things, yep. you can kind of monetize it outside of the traditional, like kind of job space as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty lucrative in, in general. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that you even hit on the, the, the content creation space, right? Because that's an area for you as a, all this education that you have, all this work that you've done on the contractor side, but you also are doing things outside of your full-time job to sustain yourself and to create more value for other people and to create more money for yourself.